This is the RTX 4060. And this is how I feel when it comes to reviewing GPUs in 2023. Now look, don't get me wrong. I still love graphics cards. I still love PC building, PC gaming, all things PC. I mean, that's what I do here on YouTube, right? But look, when you have multiple back-to-back -back GPU launches that are just lackluster, then it makes it hard to get excited to do reviews like this. Now, speaking of reviews like this, I do not qualify for any type of review samples from Nvidia or AMD or Intel or anybody. Trust me, I've tried. But but thanks to my awesome community here on YouTube and over at Patreon, I'm able to financially buy these things myself. So I cannot say thank you enough for all of your continued support. I am now able to buy products like the 4060 and do an independent review for you. And so today I want to talk about the 4060. I want to talk about what it's not, who it's not for. I want to talk about gaming benchmarks that I ran myself independently. And I want to finish up the video by talking about who the 4060 could be for. Because yes, I do think there are a few people within the PC community that the 4060 might be an okay fit for, the, depending on your situation and where you're coming from. And obviously that's a whole can of worms right there. So first of all, let's talk about the RTX 4060. And how does it compare to the RTX 3060. Now, in my previous video about all the 40 series cards, I showed this page and I want to showcase it again simply because I think it is truly that important. The 4060 was cut down in CUDA cores. The 4060 was also cut down in terms of overall VRAM. We lost four gigabytes of VRAM and the 4060 was cut down in terms of its memory bus width and its memory bandwidth. And because of all of these cuts, it did impact the performance in a negative way. Now the 4060 is faster than a 3060, not by a lot, but it is faster, but it is not faster than a 3070 or even a 3060 Ti. And that is where it starts to look a little bit bad. And, and that really puts you in a rock and a hard place because as a gamer who's looking to make a purchasing decision, now you're kind of like, okay, well, let's see, I could go with a 3060 Ti, maybe get a better value, or I can go with a 4060 and have less performance, but gain things like efficiency and frame generation, or I could go with a 3060. And so, I mean, it really puts you in a bad spot. And so now we're gonna talk about, okay, the 4060, what is it not and who is it not for, okay? The 4060 is not a 4K card, it's not. I would even go so far as to say the 4060 is not a 1440p card. Yes, it can run some games in 1440p, sure. And yes, obviously, if you turn on DLSS or frame generation or turn some settings down, clearly the frame rate will go up. But as you're going to see in my benchmarks, the card is definitely skewed towards 1080p gaming. This card is definitely a 1080p card through and through. So if you're looking to game at 4K, if you're looking to game at 1440p, especially at high refresh rates, I cannot recommend the 4060. I, I just can't. So if you're looking at a 4060, you need a plan to be a 1080p gamer. Additionally, it is worth noting the 4060 is not the fastest graphics card. It is not the cheapest graphics card, and it does not offer you the best value on the market in terms of the graphics cards you can purchase. You can definitely go buy a faster GPU, a cheaper GPU, or a GPU that just offers you a better bang for buck overall. And so there are a lot of things the 4060 is not. The 40 60 is not the generational leap that gamers were hoping for unfortunately. And now if it's not abundantly clear from everything I've said and from all the other reviews out there, let me simplify. If you have a 3060, if you have any 30 series card, the 4060 is not worth the upgrade for you. It would not be a true upgrade for you. So stay where you are. And I would say the same thing to AMD users who have a 6000 series Radeon GPU. It's not worth the upgrade for you. Now, later in the video, I do plan to talk about the benefits of the 4060 and who may benefit from purchasing this card. But first, I wanna go over my independent gaming benchmarks and show you some of the numbers just so that we can go into my final thoughts and conclusions on the card with everybody on the same page. And so now I'm gonna show you my test bench specifications here on the screen. You can pause the video and you can take a look at all the hardware I'm using. This hardware is absolute overkill for the 4060, but I wanted to make sure that I eliminated any potential of a bottleneck for the 4060 and ensure that the 4060 could run at its maximum performance 
all the time. And so because of that, today I am very confident with the numbers I am about to show you. Now, all the games were ran at 1440p and 1080p. In all of the games, I am using the maximum graphical quality preset except for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, simply because that is a competitive shooter and we all know that most gamers are not going to max out the graphics in multiplayer in a competitive shooter. Lastly, we are not looking at DLSS or ray tracing today. I'm keeping everything at native rendering except for my last game, I'm gonna show you a little bit of frame generation just to showcase what that can do simply because in all honesty, that is basically the main selling point of the 4060 if you're coming from an older card. I mean, yes, it does have other benefits, depending on the card you're comparing it to, but technically speaking with the 40 series GPUs, frame generation was the one thing that really kind of set these GPUs apart from all the other cards out there. The 30 series cards can do ray tracing. The 30 series cards can do DLSS. So it's not really a benefit for me to show you those things when your card can already do that. And so I wanted to show you raw rasterization performance and a little bit of frame generation. And now with all that out the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the gaming benchmarks. Starting things off with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I ran everything on the balance preset. We're looking at between 63 to 66C, depending on the resolution. Also, the 1080p preset is clearly outperforming 1440p by a noticeable margin. You're looking at an average frame rate of about 106 FPS when compared to about 72 FPS in game. The 1% lows on 1080p are in the 70s, whereas on 1440p, they're in the 50s. And the frame time graph is a lot better on 1080p when you compare it to 1440p. And the 4060 is rated for 115 watts. And as you can see, we're never breaking above 115 watts. The final averages are 108 FPS for 1080p and 74 FPS for 1440p. Switching things over to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I did run the in-game benchmark for this game as well. And similar to Call of Duty, our temperature is in the 60s. Our power consumption never breaks 115 watts. Now the VRAM usage here is over seven gigabytes. And so that is getting dangerous close to the eight gigabyte limit. And for the frame rate, you're looking at an average of somewhere in the 80s for 1080p, whereas on 1440p, you're struggling to hit 60 FPS. And on the 1% lows, there's not as much of a difference there. And of course, the frame time graph is better on 1080p, but I do think that is to be expected here. Our final numbers were 90 FPS on average for 1080p and 63 FPS on average for 1440p. Next up, I ran God of War on the Ultra Pre set and at 1080p our average frame rate is around 68 fps whereas on 1440p our average frame rate is around 54 fps so we're not even hitting that magical 60 fps number that we like to see whereas on 1080p on our one percent lows we are right at 60 frames per second but unfortunately with 1440p the card isn't even hitting 50 fps on the one percent lows and so this goes to show exactly what i was talking about when i said this card is not a 1440p card the frame time graph is also a lot better here on 1080p when compared to 1440p. And once again, the VRAM usage, whether if you're using 1080p or 1440p, you're over seven gigabytes. And so you don't have a lot of room left over with only an eight gigabyte card. And the wattage consumption here is getting very close to that 115 watt limit that the card is rated for. Next up, I ran Spider-Man Remastered. Now the maximum preset here is the very high preset. And on 1080p, you can see we have a frame rate that is over 100 FPS on average. And at 1440p, 40p, we're barely at 60 FPS on average. And for the 1% lows on 1080p, we're just below 60 FPS. We're in the high 50s. And on 1440p, we're all the way down below 30 frames per second on the 1% lows. And if you look at the frame time graphs, you can see a massive difference here in terms of the overall performance. Once again, the VRAM usage is over seven gigabytes here, at least for 1080p. 1440p is below seven gigabytes somehow. I'm not really sure how that's working. And the GPU temperature is low to mid 60s. And for my final game, I wanted to show off a little bit of frame generation with Cyberpunk. What you're looking at here is 1080p ultra preset on the left-hand side and 1080p ultra preset plus frame generation on the right-hand side. It is important to know that frame generation can be used without enabling DLSS. And that is exactly what I've done here. I have not enabled 
available DLSS. This is native 1080p on the ultra preset combined with frame generation. And as you can see, there is about a 23 frame difference between the average frame rates and about a 30 frame difference in the 1% lows. And of course the frame time graph is looking better too with frame generation enabled. With frame generation enabled, we are getting dangerously close to that eight gigabyte limit on the card. I hope you found those benchmarks insightful. And now I hope you can see what I meant when I said that the 4060 is not a 1440p card. Unfortunately, the 4060 is only a 1080p card. Now, with that being said, it is a product that does exist. It's on the market. You can buy it today. And it's at a price point that a lot of gamers are shopping at. And so the elephant in the room, the million dollar question is, who should buy the RTX 4060? Now, let me start off with this. Everyone's situation is completely different. And no matter what I say, this will not encompass everybody out there. The popular thing to say is that Nvidia sucks and they're greedy and that nobody should buy any 40 series card and the 4060 is a terrible card, don't buy it. The problem is, that's not what so many budget gamers are looking for. They're looking for real answers. And in addition to that, even if I were to say that, people would just leave comments telling me, hey, I'm buying a 4060 because of XYZ reasons, or hey, I bought a 4060 and I love it because of ABC reasons. And I know that is true because I've already experienced that with my 4070 video. Gamers genuinely wanna know, should I buy a 4060. Well, here is my recommendation. Number one, as I've already said, if you have a 30 series card or an AMD 6000 series card, the 4060 is not for you. Stay far, far away from it. Now, what I will say is that if you're coming from an older card, let's say a GTX 960, a GTX 1060, or even the RTX 2060, in those cases, the 4060 is not a terrible purchase for you. It's not a terrible purchase because if you upgrade to the 4060, you're going to get a decent performance uplift in terms of just rasterization. The card is incredibly efficient because it's only rated at 115 watts, and you're going to get access to frame generation, which does make a difference in terms of overall gaming performance. And of course, if you're coming from a 960 or a 1060, you've never been able to experience ray tracing. And so while a 4060 doesn't really have great ray tracing performance at all, I'm not going to pretend it does because it doesn't, you will at least have access to RT cores and you'll be able to actually try ray tracing at least just a little bit. And in some games, if you want to experience ray tracing, a lot of times you can also turn on DLSS and frame generation and actually get a respectable frame rate. And so those are all options available to you if you decide to purchase a 4060. Now see, here's the challenge. As I said before earlier in the video, the 4060 is not the cheapest card, it's not the fastest card, and it's not the card that's gonna offer you the best value. And so that means there are other options out there around the same price that can actually accomplish these things. You could buy the RTX 3060, for example. Yes, it's going to be a little bit slower, but you'll also save some money. And in addition to that, you'll gain four gigabytes of VRAM just make sure you buy the 3060 12 gigabyte model. Now, another option is the AMD Radeon 6700 XT. And basically every tech reviewer has recommended this card because number one, it significantly outperforms the RTX 4060. Number two, you get 12 gigabytes of VRAM. In fact, when the 4060 first came out, every tech reviewer was talking about, hey, go buy a 6700 XT because at the time you could get it on Newegg for as low as $309. And all of these cases on Newegg, you were getting a free game bundled with the purchase of the GPU. So when you want to talk about value, the value was astronomical. Now, unfortunately, right now at the time of this recording, I just checked Newegg and it looks like all the prices on the 6700 XT have gone up in price. The promo codes have gone away and the free game has also gone away. I'm guessing all the tech reviewers telling everybody to go buy a 6700 XT has increased the demand. And so now all the deals and the value have kind of gone away. I, I don't know, but I'm sure it will be back. And so if that sounds intriguing to you, maybe it's worth waiting it out. And of course, the other option is if you want to spend around $250, $260 and still go AMD, you can get AMD's new card, the AMD Radeon 7600. Not every gamer out there wants an AMD GPU. I'm not saying nobody wants an AMD GPU. I'm just saying not every PC gamer in the market for a GPU right now is open to AMD. 
They're just not. I know that because of my YouTube comment section. I know that because of my Discord. I've seen people come in and I've recommended an AMD card based on value and price to performance and all that stuff. And they said, yeah, I, I agree, you're right, but I just, I, I just want Nvidia. And so if that's the position you find yourself in, if you just want Nvidia, and if you're coming from an older card, then yeah, get a 4060. I actually wrote a summary here about who should buy a 4060. Let me read it to you real fast. Gamers on a budget who do not want an AMD card and who do not have a 30 series card already. I know that's an oversimplification maybe, but I really do think that is probably the easiest way of looking at it. If you have a card that is older than a 30 series GPU from Nvidia, if you don't want an AMD card, and if you're on a budget and you can't afford the higher end cards, the 4060 is probably the best bet for you if you're buying right now. But if you're willing to wait, the price will eventually come down and obviously the cheaper the 4060 becomes, the better it's going to look. But for the most part, it's a lackluster car that is not exciting. It is not the generational leap that we were hoping for. And I think the majority of people are probably gonna skip over this card. But hey, let me know what you're thinking down in the comment section below. My voice is about to go out. I've been recording for a couple of hours. If you watched all the way to the end, wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much for the support. Please do me a favor, hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, get subscribed. And until next time, E-Rock out.